unapologetic, unadulterated, and uncompromising. Greetings, brothers and sisters from around the world, and welcome back to the home, the haven, the stronghold, and the super fortress of intelligent black thought. This is a special edition of the BlackChannel.net Radio. I am, of course, your host, your brother, your humble servant, the Black Authority. And the telephone number is 646-787-1933. 646-787-1933 is your personal access code to the Blackest Radio Program in existence. The only one of this kind on planet Earth today. If I seem like I'm rushing, I'm doing it for a reason. We have a lot of ground to cover here today, and believe it or not, not a hell of a whole lot of time to be covering it in, so of course, we will be flying straight out of the gate. There is a lesson that is supposed to have been learned, especially in the last three years. There is a lesson that should have been learned from Trayvon Martin to Freddie Great, there's a lesson that is supposed to have been learned and I am not completely sure that it's even starting to sink in yet but the haven of intelligent black thought is here to help articulate this for you as only we can now let's be clear on a couple of things here first all right let's be clear on a couple of things here first black people we have no friends we have none period end of discussion we have no friends and the events as we are witnessing them have made it completely and totally perfectly clear they have declared war on us officially you have no sanctuary your if there's one thing that has become and when I say we, by the way, I'm referring to, to the modern generation of young black people. I can't even count the olders. No, not elders. Olders can't even count them. They're on the side of the white supremacists. They're with them. They're the ones telling you, don't fight back. Walk calmly to the gallows. That's what you're supposed to be doing. Walk calmly to the gallows. These old dogs ain't got no fight left in them. If for the few that actually did have any, they don't have any fight left in them. They just want white supremacy to leave them alone because they've lived their lives as cowards. And they just want white supremacy to leave them alone now as they slowly descend into their graves. You? You're just acceptable losses. Those of you in your 30s and 20s and teens you're, and, and adolescents... You're just acceptable losses. That's it. <laughs> Forget you. You are in the way of what they see as their relative safety. Whatever happens to you, that's just what happens to you. That's it. <laughs> Forget that. You messing up my thing, but you don't have anything. You're dirt poor. Yeah, but you're messing it up. Even the slight possibility that they would actually have to evolve into adults and actually, you know, take care of business in the real world, that frightens them so badly they will actually help the white supremacists to stop you because they are more afraid of the white supremacists than they are of dying. They're so desperate to get that pat on the head that they never got in life that they will kill all of you to get it. No, I'm not being hyperbolic. That's what they're doing. And that is why you must understand the situation that you're in right now. But we're seeing some changes occur. You see, there's something that we learned with Ferguson. Ferguson made something very, very clear. Made a paradigm shift very clear. And the white supremacists are screaming right now. Ferguson made it crystal clear that black society is no longer led by its clergy. Black society, after Mike Brown, no longer is being led by its clergy. The clergy have no clout here because we recognize that they are, in fact, foot soldiers of white supremacy doing their bidding to keep you quiet as you are strangled to death. That's their job. Eric Garner showed us 
that the black media no longer has any control in black society. That's what Eric Garner taught us. That the old folks who, they were nibbling around the edges, but the black media got quiet after Eric Garner. Why? You didn't see any of them standing up because they knew this time they had to call it and they simply wouldn't. So the black media got discarded after Eric Garner. It was undeniable and unmistakable. And now, in Baltimore, with the murder of Freddie Gray, now the black politician has lost his ability to control black society. Black folk are blaming the mayor, they're blaming the police chief, and they are finally starting to blame the chief. The master pulling the strings behind them all. They're, they're starting to blame Obama now. They're even saying him now. There is no sanctuary for the coon clergy, the coon media, and the coon politicians. There's no sanctuary for them any longer. They are all being called out on the carpet. Now, of course, you're going to have some folks. I mean, look, you're always going to have clowns who don't want to leave the plantation, okay? That's the way it's always. You're gonna have somebody who's gonna be backing Obama to the grave, okay? You're gonna have a. You're always gonna have folk like that. That they're just gonna back him until the guns show up at their house. So don't look for a 100% clean sweep. That's not gonna happen. Just like these folk will sit here until the white supremacists strangle them to death. They're gonna follow Obama until they die. That, that that's it. Because they have to. You have to understand. They gotta do that. They have to. Tom Joyner is part of that civil rights coon generation. And Tom Joyner bet the farm. He bet everything. He put all of his chips on Obama. He put, and by doing that, he put all of his own credibility on it also. He's got no choice. Him and his kind. They have to back Obama because they put everything into him they put all of their chips on him so he ain't going nowhere you waiting for for tom joiner to repent <laughs> ain't never gonna happen ain't never gonna happen not going to occur You're waiting for all those kind of people. You're waiting for the Elijah Cummings to admit that they were wrong. Not going to happen, people. They are never going to sit up here and say that they were wrong. Never. They put all of their chips, all of their... The reason why they're so bold around black folk is because they put all of their chips on the idea that white supremacy can't be beaten. That white supremacy cannot be stopped. So they are riding with the winning team. And that's it. What you talking about? Man, they're not listening to that. Because they put all their chips on black people losing. So if you're waiting for John Lewis... And James Clyburn and the rest of them to become recalcitrant ain't gonna happen. They bet against black people. That civil rights generation bet against black people, bet against themselves. So they have a vested interest in making sure we all fail. They have a vested interest in it. That's why you're seeing Toya, my God, Toya Graham. In the middle of the riots, why she, the riots are so dangerous that she was able to take out time to go, go and her son is fighting the police. She's taking out time to go and beat, not on the police, but on her son. And she knew she was going to get a pat on the head, boys. All of her, her, all her little buddies and friends going to give her a little pat on the head. Yeah, girl, yeah. 
don't worry, we're not going to let anything happen to, to, to interrupt your public assistance and understand something. She's got bastard, baby-making, super horse slut written all over her. Oh, you think I'm talking out of turn? You think I'm wrong? Why don't you all listen to a clip from the CBS Evening News as Scott Pelley sits there with a grin and a smirk on his face. This white man is smiling, smirking about it. And see if he has any consternation. See if he's got any reservations about seeing this woman attack her son. He's got the cat right next to him to his left that says tough love shows what he thinks of black folk huh tough love you can hear the audio for yourselves but not toya graham 16 year old michael she gave him kids were arrested but not okay i'm trying to start toya at the beginning graham, there 16 year old michael she gave him 34 kids were arrested but not toya graham 16 year old michael she gave him a piece of her mind and a good portion of her hand. Today, Toya Graham spoke to CBS News producer Christina Ruffini. I could see the objects being thrown at the police, and I was like in the awe, like, oh my God, you know, this is really happening right here with me. And lo and behold, I turn around and I look in this crowd, and my son is actually coming across the street with this hoodie on and uh, a mask. At that point, I just lost it, and he gave me eye contact. And at that point, not even thinking about cameras or anything like that. That's my only son. And at the end of the day, I don't want him to be a Freddie Gray. But to stand up there and vandalize police officers, Get over here, that, that's not justice. That's not what, you know, I'm a single mom, you know, I have six children, and I just choose not to live like that no more, and I don't want that for him. What were you thinking when you saw him? Were you shocked? Were you angry? I was angry? shocked. I was angry. I was shocked. Because you never want to see your child out there doing that. There's some days that I'll shield him in the house just so he won't go outside. Um, and I know I can't do that for the rest of my life. He's 16 years old. You know, he's into the streets. What was his reaction when he saw you? That was her, for all of you who wanted to know. That was her talking. Six kids, no husband. One son, five daughters. What an example she is. That was her. That, that, that video that you all been passing around. For all of you clowns and jackasses who were defending her and congratulating her, that's what you were defending. That's what you were congratulating. I, if you feel like a stupid ass right now, you should. If you feel dumb, yeah, that's what you were defending. She been run through and bodied by everybody. And do you hear the way that she talks? She was there to protect the police. That's what she said. That she just couldn't take it when she saw her son doing that. Oh, I'm here to protect the police. I'm here to protect them. Now, it was if it was so dangerous, why was she outside? Because she's letting you know she was out there in the middle of the street. Oh, it was so dangerous that she was in the middle of the street. She's a liar. But she saw an opportunity. She saw cameras around her. And do you all know she went straight to Facebook? For those of you who don't know, when we talk about the folk running around talking about straight to YouTube and world star if you go to her Facebook page she said yep that was me it sure was that was me no I'm not making it up that's what she said that's what she did she posted it on her Facebook page that was me that you all have been seeing on the news me me Oh, she wanted you to know that if there's going to be national attention given and she was somewhere around, oh, this is what she showed up for to make as big a fool of herself and as big an ass of herself as she possibly could because she understood this was her last chance. She's used up. She's rolled the hell out. And that's it. That's it.
We all remember the famous picture now of the black female who's shielding the white supremacist who showed up at this black rally. Well, uh, obviously, we have got ourselves a trend going on. Obviously, you have a trend happening now. And the trend that's happening is that individuals have chosen sides, like I told you. She's chosen her side. She's letting you know she's standing out there around a bunch of other black folk, but she's not telling them what she did here. Do you notice that she didn't do that? Did you notice that she did not go out there and tell that crowd, all of y'all need to get out the streets? You notice she didn't try to do that? She didn't try to do that at all, but she was out there with everybody else until she saw an opportunity to show out and be on TV. Too many people are putting their chips on the table and saying, I'm rolling with white supremacy. That's where I'm going. Because white supremacy always wins. Now, I'm not going to side with you all. White supremacy always wins. And she, in the most disgusting, despicable, putrid display of cowardice, actually went to war against her own son in defense of the white supremacist who may one day come and try to kill him. And you heard her say, I don't want him to be another Freddie Gray. She loves the police so much that she's frightened to death of them. Remember what I told you all? That's how scared they are. They are so scared of the police that they will bow and obey anything they say. Anything. Anything at all. Now, remember when I told you all, remember when I told you all that there were going to be, that this was going to be the end of the uh, era of the politician, the black politician was no longer going to be trusted. Remember when I told you that? Well, there's a reason why I knew that we were able to tell you that. Listen to the mayor of Baltimore. Now, that was this morning. The mayor of Baltimore Listen to what she had to say. Listen to what she had to say with hair flopped down over her face. I guess she's trying to do her black Jessica Rabbit routine with these black pearls. She looks like she's ready to go to the dance club. She does not look like a mayor. She does not look like any chief executive. She looks like what the folks of Baltimore voted for. Hood rat in chief. And apparently some of you Negroes are so thirsty that uh, uh, some old, and she, she's had all these weight issues. Go take a look at some pictures of her. This is a size 14, but I guess dudes is impressed by that now. Well, here she was this morning, and here's what all you dudes who thought she was cute. Here's what she thinks about you. Thank you all for being here this evening. Uh, what we see tonight that is going on in our city is very disturbing. It is very clear there is a difference between what we, what we saw over the past week with the peaceful protests, uh, those who wish to seek justice, those who wish to be heard and want answers, and the difference between those uh, protests and the thugs who only want to incite violence and destroy our city. I'm a life long resident of Baltimore. And too many people have spent generations in protests and the thugs who only want to incite violence and destroy our city. I'm a lifelong resident of Baltimore. And too many people have spent generations building up this city for it to be destroyed by thugs who, in a very senseless way, are trying to tear down what so many have fought for, tearing down businesses, tearing down a destroying property, things that we know will impact our community for years. 
We are deploying every resource possible to gain control of this situation and to ensure peace moving forward. I've been in contact with our governor, and he has agreed, and, and I have requested, and he has agreed uh, to deploy the National Guard as soon as they are available. They will be immediately deployed. We've ordered a curfew be in effect, instituting tomorrow the curfew citywide, 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. Again, there will be a citywide curfew, 10 p.m to 5 a.m. This preliminary curfew will last for one week and be extended as it is necessary. Let me be clear, we already operate under a juvenile curfew and those, ju those uh, young people who are 14 and under have a 9 p.m. curfew because it is a school night. Over 14 is 10 p.m. That is tonight and every school night. Again, we have ordered a curfew instituted starting tomorrow so now you see that the bed winches are on parade here now you see that they they've they've chosen their side they think that they have chosen who's going to protect them here, i want to see if i can get a little bit better audio on that for when she says uh, thugs see tonight that is going on in our city is very disturbing wish to seek justice those who wish to be heard and want answers, and the difference between those uh, protests. And okay, I'm not really sure what was happening with her audio, but when she says the difference between those protesters and these thugs, and that the city is being destroyed by thugs, that's what she was saying. The city is being destroyed by thugs. That's your mayor. That's your Baltimore mayor. A woman who has had absolutely not a syllable to say about the murdering police. Not a word. She hasn't said anything. And why would she? After all, she put her chips on, on, on she put her chips on the police last year when she was running for a mayor. I want to say she was running for re-election. And uh, this, this video was actually up uh, from yesterday evening. I posted it this morning for everybody to see. But um, she, she has already let you know. She has already let you know that she's on top of this. She's let you know that, hey, I'm with these guys over here. And this was last year in November. Remember that I was the only person who was pointing it out at the time that, by the way, this woman sat up here and very clearly said that she was against body cameras for the police. She was against it. This is what she said last November. The city council of Baltimore had to actually overrule her. Because she was the one, the rest of them were like, hey, let's do body cameras. And it was only your black female bedwinch mayor. She was the one who said no body cameras for police. Her by herself. Stephanie Rawlings Blake against the civilized world. Stephanie Rawlings Blake in favor of white supremacy against the civilized world. She was the one who said, no, no police body cameras. Now think about how much different that would be. And I want you all to know, I want to be very, very clear on what I'm about to say to you next here, okay? I want to be very, very clear about this. That Stephanie Rawlings Blake, and I know this will get to you. I want to say this in no uncertain terms. Stephanie Rawlings Blake... Freddie Gray's blood is on your hands. Freddie Gray's blood is on your hands. Because you said that you didn't want police to have to wear body cameras. You said that in November of 2014. The, pol the police took that as what it was, a green light and protection from the mayor. And six months later, Freddie Gray was killed. 
by six cops because they knew that you would run interference for them. His blood is on your hands, Stephanie Rawlings, because you created the environment that enabled these people to kill him. They would not have been able to do this if they knew they'd been watched. And they didn't want body cameras because they wanted the ability to kill at will. And you ran interference and said, we don't need it. Let's check the ramifications. Let's see what the impact of it would be. We don't know what the impact of body cameras would be. Now we know what the impact of not having them is. And you made this happen, Stephanie Rawlings Blake. I hold you accountable for the death of of Freddie Gray that is on your hands you are the ringleader that brother would very well likely be alive today if the cops who for no reason by the way if the cops who accosted him had to be held accountable if they could be if we actually had a way of monitoring him that man would most likely still be alive today Stephanie Rawlings Blake I hold you guilty of murder premeditated because you were everybody in the world knows what video can do and you said no this might actually hold the police accountable it might actually save some black people and your overwhelming silence as they've been killed it lets us know that this is why your white benefactors backed you because they knew that you already hated black people and you would do anything in your best Ward Connerly Jesse Lee Peterson Larry Elder Clarence Thomas impersonation that you hate black black people and that you would agree to the Faustian bargain to do their work to kill us for them. The only reason that we didn't have body that we didn't have camera footage of the police killing Freddie Gray is because you allowed it. Now, isn't it amazing? In the American press, they're all behind the mayor. But when you go overseas to Britain, they're talking about Baltimore mayor under pressure. That's, that the constituents and the community is holding them under pressure. The white supremacist media of America, they see this as their moment. I told you all weeks ago, and I'm saying it again. It was a broadcast I did. The last stand of white supremacy. White supremacy in the next 500 years. White supremacy understands that this is a critical, crucial, pivotal pass-off moment. This is a handoff moment where the baton will be passed to them because they have been a majority for the last century. They were a minority the century before that. They're a majority in this century. They're about to go back to minority status again. And so now they seek to solidify their power through terrorism and brutality. South African apartheid brutal behavior is what they're about to resort to now what they're resorting to openly and they want to make sure that they buy off enough of your black quote leaders in America the way that they bought them all off in Africa so they can practice it uninterrupted they know they have to pass off the baton of white power now you have to do it now and what that means is that you have to make all of this league terrorism legal now you gotta condition the people to accept it now it is essential that you beat them down now you cannot wait it's got to happen here. And if you fail, if you fail to oppress black people and suppress them and put them in modern day bondage, if you fail to do this here, it is over. If white supremacy does not establish its rule now for the next hundred years, uh, next 500 years as a minority, if they don't establish it here, it is is over and they know it they know it and that's why they're pulling out all the stops they're doing everything they're letting you know and before they told you we don't know what's really happening then the video started coming out showing plainly what occurred and then they're just saying oh hell forget it anyway uh next he's dead oh well next they understand what they're doing they know what they're doing but they're looking for specific reactions from black people. They're looking for some specific things. And black people, unfortunately, have not disappointed. If you all remember from this very microphone last night, I told you, what about Ray Lewis? Supposedly the most famous black man in Baltimore with the Baltimore Ravens. Ray Lewis. What about him?
Why doesn't he speak up on this and take the mayor to task? Well, this morning, I posted up a video of Ray Lewis, and he certainly did speak up about the events in Baltimore, all right. He had a lot to say about it. He was very upset, very angry, and very animated. And guess who he was upset and angry and animated about? The mayor? The cops who killed Freddie Gray? The police state establishment that's murdering black males does he even speak about them oh he wants to talk about black males all right just not quite the way you were hoping no way no way no way this can happen in our city no young kids you can't you you got to understand something get off the streets Violence is not the answer. Violence has never been the answer. Freddie Gray, he, we, we don't do nothing for him doing this. We know there's a deeper issue. We know what the jungle looks like. But this isn't it. It's enough of us in the streets trying to change what's going on. Baltimore, get off the streets. Kids, go home. Stay home. You don't have, you don't have no right to do what you're doing to this city. Too many hardworking people build this city. We put this city together. We put this city on our back. We with you. We know what's going on. We know the problems. We know there was wrong done. We know we're not getting the right justice. We know all these answers. But riding in our streets is wrong. It's dead wrong. We got to go back to the beginning. It takes a village. It takes, it takes a whole village to raise one child. We got to redefine what this looks like. We got to redefine what building Baltimore looks like. Because there's too many people putting real sweat, real tears to make our city a better place. I, I can't come back home and this is it. Kids can't walk the street. This is our future. Our future's in Baltimore. What we're trying to build is in Baltimore. Too many babies paying attention to this craziness. And the sad part is, we got young kids trying to tell us how they're going to dictate our city. That won't happen. We must change this right now. Stop the violence, man. Go home. I'm telling you, go home. I, whatever I got to do, it will not happen on our clock. It will not happen on our clock. That's right. That was Baltimore Ravens player Ray Lewis. Now, before now, I was willing to give Mr. Lewis the benefit of the doubt. Before now. But you all know my credo about benefit of the doubt. You can be given the benefit of the doubt, but at some point, there is no longer any doubt. And you heard the audio for yourselves. Ray Lewis, you gutless, spineless, cooning coward. You didn't even say the words police. You never said the words police. You never even said the police were responsible. We're not getting the right kind of justice. Did you all notice he never said the words police? He never brought their names up at all and that is because he is afraid of them. That is because he's looking for help from them. That is because, and can we just be totally honest about this Ray Lewis? from one black man to another. Can we just be totally honest about why you're so afraid of them? Because you found yourself looking at a murder rap. Can we just be honest about that? You were staring down the barrel of a murder charge. That's what you're afraid of. And Ray Lewis said that violence isn't the answer, and some people may think that I'm speaking out of turn right here, and I mean this as respectfully as I possibly can. Ray Lewis, if violence is not the answer, why did you stab that man to death? If violence is not the answer? If violence is not the answer, Ray, why did you do that? If violence is not the answer, why didn't you pack up and go home? 
If violence isn't the answer, seems like violence was the answer for you. Seems like violence was definitely the answer that night for you. But for the rest of us, there is not an answer. And you notice he didn't say for the police, violence isn't the answer for you either. You notice he didn't say a word about them. And you know why? Because Ray Lewis is scared to death that those people who broke him in half can show back up tomorrow and get him again. Ray Lewis is scared to death that tomorrow morning he could wake up and get up and those people who arrested him before will be right back to pick him up all over again. That's what he's afraid of. And he knows that if that were to happen again, if they reinstated any type of charges against him, he, he knows how that would go down. He is so scared. And, and did you hear the way that he was talking, by the way? Did you hear the way he said these kids out here going to try to dictate to us how we going to run our city? I guess he has forgotten that he nearly became a resident of his city for the rest of his life behind bars. I guess he's forgotten about that, huh? Look at how he's talking about the young kids. He sees himself as one of these old niggas. I mean, it, it took him 2.3 seconds to go to senior citizen coon status, didn't it? Didn't it? It took him 2.3 seconds to turn into Steven from Django Unchained. I come snatch you young niggas off that horse right there. I come get you. Do you see how quickly he broke down into plantation buck status? And let me say this very clearly to you, Ray Lewis. That is what you are. Nobody, if nobody else says it directly straight down the barrel to you, that is what you are, Ray Lewis. You are a slow-witted, dim-witted, low IQ, up and down the field, running and jumping and hurdling, smiling, plantation buck. That is what you are, big and strong and dumb and unprincipled and immoral undisciplined except what massa tell you that's what you are ray lewis and you made your living in this world doing that so if we can all just be straight up right now and just call it like it is that's what you are which is steroids by the way very glad your steroids didn't kill you Although out there on that football field, I'm pretty sure you might, might have practically killed a few people, by the way. Good job on the steroids and passing all those drug tests. Really good how you did that. That His words were not for black people, by the way. Oh, I offended some people, didn't I? Oh, hell, my numbers dropped. I guess I need to change up the way I'm talking. Yeah, I need to change it up. I'm going to turn this damn thing up, what I'm going to do. You see, Ray Lewis's words were not directed at black people. We were not the intended audience of his remarks. We are not the intended audience. The white folk that he is afraid of and scared of. The people that he's worried if they're going to take a pension or not give him endorsement deals. If they're going to leave him out of video games. You see, there's a lot of football players in video games. I don't know how many Jim Brown is in, though. Oh, I wasn't supposed to say that, was I? I don't know how many video games that one of the greatest of all time, Jim Brown. I don't know how many football games he's in. I haven't seen him on any. Maybe y'all can help me out with that one. I ain't seen him in a bunch of games with them touting his name like that. Ray Lewis is trying to look out for his ass. I wouldn't be surprised if he got a phone call from EA Sports. 
or Madden NFL or Xbox saying, um, you going to say something about this, Ray? You going to say that something about this, Ray? Because you see, we only take a certain type of person. Only a certain type of person can be in our game, Ray. And if you're a troublemaker, Ray, and if you're siding with troublemakers, Ray, we got to remove you, Ray. We got to remove you. So, you need to say something. You know, that's how pimps do their hoes. Let me just sidetrack for a minute, y'all. That's how pimps do their hoes. A pimp tells his hoe, Why ain't you better say something? When the police jack him up and they say, whose drugs are these? The pimp says, Trick, you better say something. No, nah, Ray Lewis thinks he's going to be a sportscaster with his mumble mouth ass. That's that carrot that they hold out in front of him. Ain't that right, Shannon Sharp? That's that carrot that they hold out for them, Michael Irvin. That's that carrot they hold out for you, Charles Barkley. That even though you have pathetic speaking skills, completely pathetic, they hold that carrot out for you. That if you play the game, one day we'll reward you. And I'm ashamed to say this today, and, and I know you're listening. Mr. Wendell Pierce, I know you're listening. And both of us as Louisiana natives, you from the south in New Orleans, me from the very tip top Shreveport in the north. Brother, I don't know what you meant today when you were calling those people criminals. I don't know what you were trying to say. And I had criticism for the protesters and the demonstrators, but I never called my people thugs and I never called them criminals. I will never blame the victims for standing up and doing something even if I feel that it may be misguided, I will never sit up here and start taking on the vocabulary of the white supremacists for them against my own best interest. Because let me tell you something, people. If the police did to me what they did to Freddie Gray, I would hope somebody would be out here raising some kind of hell somewhere because the court system damn sure ain't going to do it. I would hope somebody was out here extracting a toll somewhere. Somebody. And if Wendell Pierce gets his two front teeth broken out tomorrow morning, he's going to be wishing that somebody somewhere would be doing something on his behalf because the court system ain't going to do it. He's talking about call the Department of Justice. I guess nobody told Mr. Pierce that Loretta Lynch, her first act as attorney general was to say that her job is to boost the morale of police departments around the country. That's code speak for don't worry, police. I got the niggas covered. Ain't nobody going to mess with you. I got you back. Now, I'm not going to sit up here and flog Wendell Pierce as badly as I probably could. And I don't know if those words had to do with his boss, or his old boss, I guess, although in some ways still his boss, David Simon, the creator of The Wire. Because David Simon got on his website, this is a man who, who made himself a, a household name and had a hit series, or at least in a critically acclaimed series, based on his portrayal of crime in Baltimore, and some rioting in Baltimore, by the way, on his show. He had no problem portraying that, and yet he did a 180, of course, against black folk, of course. So I don't know if Wendell Pierce just feels like he has to roll with it. I don't know if he feels like he just has to play the game. I don't know if somebody put a bug in his ear. I don't know if that happened, but I will say that that was off code, Wendell. That was off code. I cannot co-sign that, and I'm usually with you. I'm usually with you. Brother, that's off code. Because if somebody broke your back the way they did Freddie Gray's, I'd want something lighten up. I'd want something lighten up. Real talk. Now, let me tell you all what ain't going to work. 
Let me give you an idea what ain't gonna work. Let me just remind you. I'm gonna trust in the Lord. I'm gonna trust in the Lord. I'm gonna trust in the Lord until I die. I'm gonna trust in the Lord. I'm gonna trust in the hallelujah i am gonna trust in the lord until i die that's what we have going on here right now we got a whole bunch of people sitting up here saying that You think that that's going to get us something done, and what you're doing is exposing yourself. You are exposing yourself. Hey, if you think that's going to work. I've explained this to you all before, and I'll explain it again, people. When you are being physically assaulted, and somebody sits up here and starts trying to invoke intangible options that person is telling you that i ain't got a clue what i'm supposed to do i don't have any answers for you i don't have any answers for you well we got the answer we got the answer i guess some folks think this is gonna be a coon's holiday because understand, just like white supremacy knows that this is their last stand, the coons who are depending on white supremacy, they know this is their last stand too. They know this is it. This is their Alamo. This is it. There ain't going to be anything else after this. So they are showing you just like the slave Negroes who came and fought for the Confederacy during the Civil War. They're letting you know, hey, I... I'm against black folk too, Mr. Charlie. Don't worry, I'm against them niggas too. I'm gonna stop them, Mr. Charlie. I ain't gonna mess up this good thing I got here, Mr. Charlie. Ain't that right, Ray Lewis? Let's go ahead and open up the phone lines here right now. We're gonna see if we can take a caller from 631. You're on live with the Black Channel. Okay, I'm pretty sure I'm on here. Caller from... Okay, I thought I was. I guess not. Caller from 631. You're on live with the Black Channel. Okay. We'll see if we can try that again. Caller from 910. You're on live with the Black Channel. Okay, something really weird happening here. Not sure what's going on with the switchboard here or whatever. I'm going to try somebody else here. Something strange is happening when he tries to take calls. Let me get a caller from 504. You're on live with the Black Channel. Okay, I'm almost certain something wrong is going on here. 504. Is that Wendell Pierce, I wonder? Okay, 504. I'm not really sure what's going on here. Something strange is happening on the line when you try to bring them on here. I know we had talked to a blog talk about this earlier, but something strange is happening on here. Um, If you're on the line, and I think it is, they were telling me that if you want to speak to the host, you have to press 1 on your phone. So if you're trying to speak to me or whatever, because it may be that you're cutting yourself off, uh, they took away, they said they took away the prompts, so I told them that was going to be hella confusing to a lot of people, especially after years of doing it one way. So I think you have to press one to speak to the host uh, when you call in. You don't want to just be pressing numbers all willy nilly. I'm trying to see if it's taking any, because I don't think it's taking anybody here. Let me get caller from 718. You're on live with the Black Channel. Okay something crazy going on let me see if i can get this looked at right quick as i was saying here while i see if i can get them to get this uh see if we can get this straightened out here 
as I was saying, what's happening right now, what you are witnessing is the last stand of coonery and buffoonery and white supremacy and everybody who's been dependent upon it and everybody who is placing their bets right now. They're putting their chips on the table right now. And that is what they are doing. They are saying to themselves that if we are, if it's going to go down, then we are going to uh, see if we can keep it up with us here. Now we have some folk here in the chat room who apparently think that this is a matter of debate. I assure you it is not. I'm going to go ahead. I don't know what happened to my mods and whatnot. They seem to be out to lunch or whatever. Uh, Asha, see if you can... I'm going to go ahead and mod you, Asha, and uh, ambush here. See if you can go ahead and help our people who are discontented. See if you all can get uh, their information and advise them they need to call in. No more comments in the room. They're going to need to just go ahead and call in is what they need to do and uh they can give their comments here because the day and age this is what coons like to do coons believe to themselves well i will support the white dominant supremacist power structure i'll support white supremacy from the shadows because i'm a cowardly scared coon i won't stand up and and, and 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 defend them outright in a group of black folk i'll just slither in and see if i can infiltrate and see if i can defend them on the low let me see if i can do that instead no that's not going to be allowed here now i think we got that issue straightened out here let's see if we can start trying to take a few phone calls let me get caller from 910. You're on live with the Black Channel. Okay, at least I was thinking that was the case being taken care of here. I might be wrong. Yeah, I'm not really sure what's going on there. It's, uh... Yeah, I'm not sure what's happening. It's, uh, giving problems with that. Because it had... it For everybody who's out there listening and whatnot, it did have it on here. <laughs> But for some reason, it's not uh, it's not hooking up for some reason. I'm trying to see if I can get it to dial in. Because I'm seeing everybody on here. I'm seeing them come in. I'm seeing them go off. Not really sure what's happening with it. I was on there, and now it's messing up on you. Since there are some people here who want to try to defend these things, let's just go ahead and make sure that we've got them straight about that. Let's make sure we have them straight about that. Because right now, a lot of people are hedging their bets. Right now, a lot of people are hedging their bets. And they're saying to themselves, hey... I'll see if I can just hang out. I'll see if I can just hang out. I'll see if I can just hang out here and see if I can just hold the fort for him. That's not going to fly. That is not going to fly. Let me see if I can get caller from 205. You're on live with the Black Channel. Press 1. Okay, I'm not sure what's going on with this thing here. That is crazy. I guess they're at it again, or whatever the case might be. Your show Caller will go from... live in five seconds. Four, okay, let's see if that three, links them up instead. Two, one. All right. Now I think that's going to have them on here now. All right, caller from 205, you're on live with the Black Channel. I think they may have gotten disconnected or something. Caller from 615, you're on live. Okay, I think I'm hearing them, but I'm not sure if they're hearing me or not. Although it could be our usual white supremacist problem again. Hmm. Okay, I'm probably going to have to uh, just leave them alone for a little while there because I'm not really sure what was going on with that. As you all have been hearing from the audio problems, 
like I say, they've they've got their reasons for doing what they're doing. We all know how that works. They've got their reasoning for it because understand, they know like you know. And they understand like you and I understand. They're not going to get another chance to get this right. You might not believe that this is the end of white supremacy as you knew it or as you know it. You might not believe that, but there are a whole bunch of people out there who are hedging their bets that, yes, this is. There are a whole bunch of folk out there hedging their bets that, yeah, we can, we can make this happen. We can stop black progress if we really try. They really do believe that they can do that. They really do believe that if they all get together and just try hard enough, they can hold us all back. They really do believe that. And that's why they're getting themselves in the position now. They believe in ways that you are not even understanding that if they are able to derail this, they really do believe that they are going to be able to keep us enslaved for the next 500 years. Ray Rice considers himself to be privileged. Uh, Ray Lewis, rather, considers himself to be privileged. They consider that they've gotten into their position, and if they can keep the rest of us from elevating, he'll be home free. That's the standpoint at which he comes at this from. That if he can just stop the rest of us, he'll be home free. He won't have anything else to worry about. All they have to do is stop us. And they'll be home free. Lee Daniels thinks all he has to do is stop us and he'll be okay. Stephanie Rawlings Blake believes that all she's got to do is stop us and she'll be okay. That these folk really will take care of her if she just plays the game. All she's got to do is play along. Now, I want to know how many of you are telling yourselves that, well, if I let this go, I'll be okay. I want to know how many of you think that's going to happen. I want to know how many of you think that you are going to be able to dodge that as easily as they have. Because ain't no NFL contract waiting for any of you. There's no NFL contract waiting for me. There's nobody sitting up here offering us a TV deal that we would be able to use to elevate ourselves. Nobody's going to, going, to, going to offer that to any of us. We're out here on our own. And these guys know that. You see, Ray Lewis can coon and butt dance his way into a job at ESPN. You can't do that. If Ray Lewis gets pulled over by the police, the chances are not as good as yours that he's going to be able to just walk away. So he thinks he's inherited some honorary white status. And now he showed you that when he that when they had their thumb on him, oh, he, he was fight the power. He ain't going along with that. Just as soon as they let it up just a little bit and just as soon as some of the sports commentators just gave him a little bit. Just a little bit. As soon as they let him know that, hey, man, you know, Ray Lewis, they're talking about one of the all-time greats. When he was at the NFL and he does that little uh, coon dance that he does when he walks out there. You all know the one I'm talking about. That little coon dance that he does, a little coon shuffle that he likes to do when he walks out there. You know the one I'm talking about. He goes out there and does that and, 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 and he wants to make everybody think that, okay, he's in there. He, he sings, he dances. Oh, he was just letting you know, man, I am with the program. 
He was letting you know. He was letting you know, I got out and I ain't never giving this up. That's when he was letting you know that the rest of you, all the rest of you are subject to white supremacy, not me. Not me. I don't have to worry about that. You all got to worry about that. I don't have to worry about it. That's not my problem. That's not my problem. You all have to worry about racism now. Don't you see all these people out here congratulate me and pat me on the back and telling me how great I run and buck dance up and down this field for them? Don't you know I'm in? Don't you know that I am in? I ain't worried about a damn thing. The rest of you have to worry about that. And then in the absolute most disgraceful thing that you've seen, did you hear how he declared war on the young people? And then wants to sit up here and how, will someone explain to me how in the hell you think you're going to sit up here and talk garbage to young folk? And then sit up here and, t and talk to them like you going to call shots to them. Let me tell you something, Ray Lewis, you coon. You, what have you done for the young black people in Baltimore that they would listen to you? What have you built for them, Ray Lewis, that they would listen to you? What have you done? Charles Barkley, Stephen A. Smith, what have you done for these young people that would make any of them listen or obey anything you got to say? They don't owe you anything because you've done nothing for them. You went to the NFL, you butt danced, you kicked, you screamed, you, 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 you yahooed, you booed like a hoe when they put you on child support with your umpteen kids. By, oh, I'm sorry, I'm not supposed to throw that out there either, by the way. I'm not supposed to throw that out there. I'm not supposed to talk about the kids, am I? Okay. Let me leave all your kids out of this, Ray. Bastard baby making. Barroom fight having, stabbing. Super buck, Ray Lewis. But he wants to come young, among young black people that he has done nothing for. Let me go a little bit further here. Ray Lewis, you owe the young black people of Baltimore. You owe them. They don't owe you a damn thing. They don't owe you a damn thing, you gridiron gorilla. They don't owe you anything. You owe them. They bought your jerseys. You didn't buy theirs. They paid your salary. You didn't pay theirs. They made you a household name. You didn't make them a household name. They benefited and elevated your lifestyle. You didn't, all you did was take from them. You gave nothing. You've given nothing. You've built nothing. You owe the young people of Baltimore. They owe you not a damn thing. Not a damn thing. I think I see a familiar face here. Is this, is this Mona Lachey? Okay, well, I guess you can hear me then. What's, I guess you've been hearing here today. Perhaps we should, perhaps we should go ahead and see if we can do a spanking of the young black folk in Baltimore so that they'll listen to their good uncle Ray Lewis who's done nothing for them. What do you think? You know, as I was listening to you, Jason, and he's saying that the young kids out here uh, dictating what they're going to do, they're doing it because the elders didn't do anything. And you're absolutely correct. They don't owe him anything. He owes them something. He banged on his people. He was loud. He was obnoxious. He was putting his fist in his hand and screaming. Yeah, that, that wasn't for black people. That was for white people. That was for black people. I think that somebody got a hold of him. 
I think that somebody got a hold of Ray Lewis and they told him, you better go out there and say something and it better be forceful and it better be direct. And I think that Ray Lewis has spent so much of his life taking orders from rich, white, racist people that at this point in his life, it's just a reflex now. It's just reflexive. Absolutely. I'm sorry. I, I want to talk about uh, the cheater, Pastor Maul uh, Bryant, standing next to Stephanie um, Blake. He's a cheater, and he needs to change the name of his church, the Black Empowerment Temple, because he is not empowering anybody but himself. And we have all these people up here, um, you know, just leading us in the wrong direction. And you're absolutely correct, Jay. You know, where once people were blind, they are seeing what's going on. Well, we have the people in corporate America, you know, white supremacists and the black people that accomplished them that are in corporate America that are not saying anything, turning a blind eye because they don't want to lose their job. We have people in Baltimore, they see what's going on, and they're not going to take it anymore. Whenever you set up an an atmosphere or an environment of poverty and and no opportunity, what do you expect the people to do but to become violent? Freddie Gray, um, what, 80% of his spine was shattered? His voice box was crashed. His freaking neck was damn near severed. And they're talking about CVS, 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 burn it down CVS. They had those places, they had those cameras in place because they knew they were going to allow CVS to get burned down because CVS has insurance. But nobody wants to talk about how Freddie Gray's parents had to take that insurance money and go buy a cemetery plot and cast it for their child. You know, we talk about slavery, and you all need to call it what it is, chattel slavery, because you were seen as livestock, you were seen as a piece of property, and that meant that your life had a dollar value on it. And that is why these people can take a look at a dead black man on their left, and a broken window at a store on their right and put a higher value, at least in their minds, a higher value on a window or a store than they do a dead black person. These people are white supremacists and they're flunkies and lackeys and black coons who follow them, letting you know that in their minds, black lives are worth less than a store. You are worth less than a car. You are worth less than a can of beans. And they're letting you know in 2015 that their attitude toward the value of black life is no different than it was in 1815. That's what they're trying to tell you with these subtle little digs, not even subtle, these overt statements that, but look at our store, but there's a dead man over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we're over that. Look at my store. Look at the store over here. If you want the rioting to stop in Baltimore, go arrest the six killers. You can arrest hundreds of protesters. Why are you not arresting the six killers? Because if it had been a black man who broke a cop's spine, they wouldn't want to hear what the story was. He would already be in jail. So why is it that the six police are not there already? They should already be there. Plain and simple. They should already be there. But they're not. And that's why these people are letting you know. They they know the psychological programming they're trying to do. They understand what they're doing. And that's why I warned you all. I warned you years ago that as the white population goes falling back down towards that 50% mark, the viciousness will escalate back to what they were doing in 1805 and 1820 and 1840 and 1850 and 1860 and so on. 
the viciousness and the barbarism are going to start cranking up now. And statements that you heard from Chief Justice Roger Tawney that the black man has no rights that the white man is obligated to respect, you are going to start hearing those. You're starting to hear those things again today. First, it's the local police departments and city councils. Eventually, it'll be your federal government doing it. And I wonder how much buck dancing Ray Lewis will be doing then. But to be totally honest, Ray Lewis today would put on a dress and do whatever his white overlords tell him to do. Stephanie Rawlings Blake, as I explained before, that woman is ready to hike up her skirt for whatever white benefactor comes her way. You want to talk about the real life Olivia Pope. She is Olivia Pope without the high IQ. She's Olivia Pope if Olivia Pope were put into a prominent position but were a brain dead idiot. That's Stephanie Rawlings Blake. She's a sock puppet. But then again, that's all they wanted. Just somebody who would do their bidding. Well, now that I think we got the phone straightened out here, let me see if I can get caller from 205. You've been waiting for a little while. Welcome to the Black Channel. Okay, I have to check and see which one of these is on for that. We get 910. You're on live with the Black Channel. Yes, hello? Yes, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Hello? Oh, yeah, this, this is Sam Davis from North Carolina. Okay, what was that name again? Uh, Sam Pitt, North Carolina. Sam Pitt, North Carolina. What's on your mind? Uh, basically the same as you guys. Uh, Mind-blowing what's going on. Uh, uh, just looking at black people, you will know that the, the kind of turmoil that's going on in Detroit right now. Uh, same thing when Ferguson was happening. Uh, I got people asking me, um, who you got, uh, Pacquiao or uh, Floyd Mayweather? I'm looking at the guy that saw a ghost. Like, uh, none. <laughs> I got Freddie Gray, you know? What, what are you talking about? You know what I'm saying? I mean, it... it it, it, it takes very little to get black people distracted, to get off of an issue, if they were ever even on. They don't care. Nobody cares. Well, until, until they show up for them. I just then know. everybody gets concerned. Now, once the lights show up for them, then all of a sudden they want everybody to get on point and everybody to come running to the rescue. The time to protect yourself from being a Freddie Gray is when you saw the last Freddie Gray happening. If you had raised enough hell when Freddie Gray got killed by the police, that is what stops the police from thinking they can just kill you and walk home. That's what prevents that from happening. But when you sit there and the police kill one of your people and then they see y'all all start buck dancing, that's it. That is it. They don't need to see anything else. They're done. They're done. Thank you very much for giving us a call here. Let me get caller from 615. You're on live with the Black Channel. Caller from 615. Last try. You're on live with the Black Channel. Okay. Caller from 615 is probably playing with his Xbox. Caller from 409. You're on live with the Black Channel. Yeah. Hello. Yes, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Yes, this is Jacoy Henry from Port Arthur, Texas. Okay, what's on your mind, brother? Same you guys. Fish and all that stuff, man. I seen the news early and I couldn't even... I couldn't watch it for more than five minutes. I seen a guy on there leading a... a a drill team or some, something like that. Like, I don't know. They were dancing in the street. He was talking to another guy. It was like a whole bunch of just bull, bull crap. Just bull crap there, man. And I don't know who's organizing who out there, who's out there, man. But he just lost, man. Police are out here killing us in the streets. And we worrying about the prancing elites. 
and 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 everything else we are desperate to try to distract ourselves and that is what you and i have to take task against the black folk who are happy to hold us on this plantation we got to take task against them we have to we have to because yeah. This boy is out there throwing rocks at the white supremacists. He is fighting white supremacy in the street face to face. And here comes his mama to literally stand in the way of the rocks. Literally. I'll take a rock for you, Mr. Oh white supremacist. God. I'll take a rock for you. I mean, she's literally jumping in the way. Ray Lewis is literally jumping in the way of us getting at the throat of white supremacy. He's literally doing it. He's, you don't see, let me tell y'all something. Have you all seen any of the white supremacists and racists out there as animated as Ray Lewis was in that video? I, go turn on Fox and look at Bill O'Reilly, Rush Limbaugh, Glenn Beck, Sean Hannity, your usual suspects of white bigots. Do you see any of them as upset and animated and jumping up and down and everything else that Ray Lewis was doing? Did you see them as excited about the burning down the CVS as he was? Did you see any of them as upset about it? They were, Ray Lewis was more upset than they are. He's more angry. He's a clown. And Malcolm X told us about this decades ago. So just in case you all think this was new, it's not new. Ray Lewis was doing what they always do. The house niggas always boss. We sick our house, our store, our yard, our work. Okay. Okay. It's not our work. I'm the only one working. Okay. But everything else is ours, right? All right. I'm good. I'm good. Pathetic. Pathetic, man. Disgusting to watch. Y'all remember how Michael Jackson put, like, bags over his kids' heads? Put, like, little masks on them? So people couldn't see them? I wouldn't blame Ray Lewis's children for doing the same thing right now. If I were Ray Lewis's kids, I, I wouldn't blame any of them for walking around with a mask on. I wouldn't. How could I? If I were them, I'd be so embarrassed and so humiliated. I, I, I don't see how you can brag about that being your father. It's cold. And they everywhere. Stephanie Rawlings Blake's... Man, everywhere you turn around. Stephanie Rawlings Blake's political career is essentially over. It's essentially over. But look how cheap a suicide bomber came for them. She's essentially a suicide bomber. And look how cheap she came. They're not going to do a damn thing for her when she leaves office. We all saw what they did to Kwame Kilpatrick. Kwame Kilpatrick did the white supremacist bidding. And what did they do to him? They put him in jail before his term was even over. Stephanie Rawlings Blake is doing their bidding. And don't be surprised if she marches out of City Hall in handcuffs. Quote me on that. Quote me on that. Quote me. Every time one of these Negroes think they can buck dance and play the game. And don't worry, the, the white person behind me will protect me if things go bad. And they find out the hard way what the hell happens. So her political career is essentially over. She thinks they're going to protect her and take care of her after she's out of office because she was good and loyal. She doesn't understand, baby, you are a toilet tissue. You are here to be used and discarded once your usefulness is over. And she don't get that. I'll let you have the last word. I can't wait. I just can't wait to y'all have that good dose of reality. Can't wait to see it. I just cannot wait. Y'all just get that. Because they need it. And all of us can see it. For anybody who's on the fence, anything that you're saying or that you're discussing, they can see that. It go down how it's supposed to. Our white supremacy has planned it for years, years and years. Thank you very much for giving us a call here tonight, and definitely, I think we'll all be watching when that when when the chips come down for her. 
Let me get caller from 202. You're on live with the Black Channel. Turn down your speakers. What's going on, Jake? What's going on, Jake? Okay, if you're on speaker, you Black take... Alright, if you're on speaker, you either get closer to your phone or take it off a of speaker because your background noise is coming up challenging you. What's your name? Where you're calling from? from Maryland. Okay. Brother, you're in a car or something and you're traveling down the road and I'm not really sure what's happening there, but it's it's we can't make out what you're saying. Let me give you a few moments here. I'll see if you can take it off a speaker and we'll see if that helps. I don't know if he's calling from an airplane or, or what the case may be, but we'll we'll see if we can just come back to that here. Um let me get caller from 773, you're on live with the Black Channel. Oh, oh yes, uh, what up? Uh, what's up, Jason? This is Jalen calling from... Uh, what up? Well, I'm in Champagne right now at school. Okay, so, get a little bit closer to your... Like get a little bit already. closer to your phone so we can hear you. What's your name and where you're calling from again? Uh, okay, can you hear me better? Okay, what's your name where you're calling from? Uh, this is Jalen. I'm calling from Champagne. I'm in school right now, so they help my day start. So I go in my after class, and I see, I see, um, you know, two black students like the assistant teacher. They they dancing and shit. I'm looking like like yesterday. Like, you would never know if something is annoying how the way people are acting. Like I'm like, why the fuck are y'all dancing, dancing and shit for? Then like when the class started, the teacher came in. He's old. Oh, he's from the civil rights generation. He marks with King, and he keep on. He keeps pushing the narrative. He believes that if he, if, if like he focuses on like push the whole we're all human beings narrative. Oh, every human being came from Africa. Maybe all of this would stop. That this whole narrative. I just be in the classroom just shaking my head and she's like, really? Yeah. I mean, he's letting you know he ain't fighting nothing. He's got his little job position. I'm going to tell you about these Negroes with their job positions, by the way. This is why you got so many black folk out here cooning. Ray Lewis, NFL player, little old title. Wendell Pierce, actor, little old title. Lee Daniels, producer, little old title. Your academics, that's one thing that was left off of my meme here today. That was one thing that was left off of my meme today that I put up today. When I said that you can't trust the clergy, they're owned by white supremacy. You can't trust your parents, they're owned by white supremacy. You can't trust the politicians, they're owned by white supremacy. You can't trust the academics. They're owned by white supremacy too. You all heard when I was talking to Sheena Howard. As soon as we got on the subject of white supremacy, Miss I Tell It Like It Is, and I'm blatant it in your face, oh, she'll talk about homosexuality and homophobia all day. But as soon as we say white supremacy, all of a sudden, boy, you saw the cowardice jump up in her eyes. She ain't got a crossword to say about that. Now, the rest of us? Oh, she can say plenty. About them, she clammed up. She let you know who backs her. She let you know who she's counting on. She's not going to bite the hand that feeds her. So just understand that was what you witnessed today. They were letting you know that. Oh, we are yeah. not going to, you're not going to sit up here and mess up this good thing I got going. Right. And also, yeah, another thing, like a couple of weeks ago, like a student, like, rose, you know, asked, asked, asked the professor a question. Oh, no, like, the student he asked, I don't know why he asked with, with Jagger, like, but, but then, like, you know, the professor, he asked or whatever, then, but he, he kind of, like, as in like a politically right way or something like that, he he avoids saying that Jay Jay who was like the enemy towards people. So like after the class, I went up to the went up to the brother like, look here, man, Jay who was the enemy towards black people, man. I just told him straight up, the teacher didn't want to say it. You watch these people and they let you know who their masters are by who they refuse to speak against. When you are talking out against racism more than he is, he's letting you know, hey, the racists are the ones I depend on. 
I'm not going to do anything to them. Brother, this is it. It's over for him. You know why? Let me tell you the real reason why, Jalen, why it's over for him and his kind. The real reason why it's over for him and his kind, brother, is because they didn't build a damn thing. So at this point in his life, he is dependent on those people. They didn't build a damn thing. So he's gotten to this point in his life where he needs them. He hasn't built anything. He has nothing independent that he owns on his own. He is dependent on them for his retirement because he has not seen to it. And he didn't get together with other black men and they didn't build an economy so that they could have their own independent retirement program. So they got to depend on these people. There is no plan B for him, brother. He's what, in his 60s now? There's no plan B. Yeah, yeah. This is it. This is it. So you're at the beginning of your work in life. You have the opportunity to build some wealth and assets for yourself. Him, he missed the boat. Or should I say the train? I guess he missed the boat, so he caught the, the train, the coon train. He missed the boat, so he caught the coon train. So, brother, he's, he's not going to do that. He, he lost. He missed it. The, he's, he is out of the most important and precious commodity of all. Not gold, not silver, not diamonds. Time. He's out of time. So this is plan B. This is plan B. He's not going to let you talk him into nothing that's going to mess that up because he didn't prepare. Now he has to be a slave. That's where he's at now. I'll let you have the last word. Well, I'm going to say black first and like, man, like these... Like these events has been going on, it's definitely it's showing me like whose side the you know whose side people are on. It's like people are on. It's crazy to me. This whole bunch of this whole bunch of this crazy stuff is like shock. Kind of not really shock, just like wow, the shit. That's it. No, thank you very much for giving us a call. We are at war, is what it is. And war is a peculiar thing because in war, when you meet somebody, it's you're with us or you're with them. And if you're not with us, you're my enemy and I got to deal with you. So you find out in war which side a person is more afraid of. Not the one that they have the most allegiance to. That's usually what you look for, but... That actually doesn't happen most. You usually just find out which side that person is most afraid of. If they're more afraid of the enemies or if they're more afraid of you. And these people are letting y'all know who they're more afraid of. So that's why they're doing it. War exposes your cowards, your liars, your con men, your frauds, your bed winches, your whores. You're immoral, you're spineless, you're unprincipled. It exposes all of them. It exposes all of them. Not some, all of them. They're going to let you know real quick that this is their last leg they're standing on. You are not going to put them in bad with white daddy. Let me see if we can try this uh, again here. See if we can grab caller from 813. You're on live with the Black Channel. First, this is Jason Reed calling for Florida. How you doing, brother? What's on your mind, brother? You've seen it all as it unfolds today. I've seen all of it over the last few days. And you know, this this uh, riot, it, it shook up. It shook up. It cut the best. Boy, you see all the snakes. All the snakes, all the turncoats, everything, all the coons, all the spec coons. We we know who white supremacists are. We already knew that. We showed you all who all the coons were, who all the agents were, who all the bedwins were. They have all come out and forced Fox News, MSNBC, CNN was scrambling to find coons all over the place. You know, there was only so one legit brother that actually heard something. And um, held Wolf Blitz ass posted. That's the only brother I've seen, you know, that kept the focus on, you know, the cause of the rocks, which is police brutality, while everyone else was trying to deflect. So, you know, uh, uh, it, it's been eye opening. Um, people, family will turn on you. 
I've had family. I've had family straight snitching on me. My mother is on Facebook. My mother is not on Twitter. I got a phone call from my mother to me about trying to see out about what I've been posting on Facebook. Worried about what I'm posting. I'm like, oh, so some in the family running back. But my mom knows how I feel. She's nervous, but I'm like, I can take care of myself. So, you know, it, it. I've seen a bunch of know, people give stories absolutely. like that. It's been a bunch of people who have yep. contacted me talking about their family. I mean, these Negroes don't even live in Baltimore. Don't even right. live there. What are you worried about? You don't even live there. What are you talking about? Nobody's coming here for you. But remember what I told y'all after Ferguson. Because we started seeing this then. I mean, we didn't see it the whole time, but I articulated it for you all after Ferguson. That black people are so beaten down and coonish that they have, they're institutionalized. That they're behaving as if they're on a plantation, even though they know they're not. They're behaving as if they have a white supremacist watching them over their shoulder day and night, even though we know there isn't one. It's not superstition. That's just what happens when you give up. And these are individuals who've given up. And you're going to find them in your own family. Folk who before now, oh, they were talking like they were all black and militant. The tanks showed up and all of a sudden ain't no militants. Ain't no black folk will even say white supremacy. Now the tanks are showing up. Now five years ago, I bet you half them relatives you talking about, they were telling you about how they was fighting during the 60s. And boy, they was fighting white supremacy back then. Boy, we was, we was tearing it up. We wasn't letting them push us around. Now, fast forward to 2015, and they think there's a chance these folk could show up at their door. This Negro lives in Sacramento talking about y'all stop making trouble in Baltimore. I thought you was fighting these folks back in the 60s. I thought that's what you was doing. So, brother, you're finding out that you got liars in your family. It, it, and you know what? It's good. It's good. I don't yeah. care if it's your mama. You need to be aware who they are because these are the people that you need to keep away from your kids and everything else. They're not going to stand by you. They, they, they were okay until 2015 when the tanks showed up. They were okay right until then, which tells you they've been lying to you the whole time. And that's why I want this to go the way it is. We got a lot of folk out here who are just liars. Liars, cowards, coons, and that's why they're doing this. They, wanna, they will do anything and everything to save their own hide. And I'm sitting out here looking at these babies and saying, at what point do we give them a better future than the one we had at what point do we give them a better tomorrow than we had when does that happen in black society because when somebody tells you that these folk are out here killing us and you say well let's pray about it you saying well hey who gives a damn what happens to the kids <laughs> hey it's just god's will kids you struck out oh well no forget that those are the words of cowards and i, I don't even have any kids but I want to be able to look them in the eye. I don't want this moment that your relatives are having, Jason. They're having a moment right now where you, the nephew, the cousin, the son, cannot look at them with respect. And I would rather die a million deaths like Freddie Gray than to live one life without the respect of my children. No, not their respect. I don't want my children's respect. I want what every man wants. I want my children's reverence. I want them to be a, I don't want them to just be able to look at me. That's respect is when somebody looks at you. I want them to be able to look up to me. I want them to say that, man, I don't know if I can be the man he was. He set such an example. I don't know if I can reach that. But I feel obligated to because I don't see, I, I can think of nothing finer. That's the moment I want. And your people just lost theirs. I, yeah, they, they, they are, you know, it's, it's just, it's, it's coming and it's coming and it's coming at me a ways of like, you're not, I'm not wavering. I'm not changing what I'm saying. I'm going to keep saying what I'm saying. I'm going to keep beating this drum because I have a five year old that is sitting there that has to help in this world. And I can't, I'm not going to, I'd be damned if I walk around here fretting, he's a teenager every time he goes out the door. I can't do that. 
Yeah, I, I mean, like that. I refuse to live that. Your great granddaddy lived like that. Your granddaddy lived like that. Your daddy lived like that. You live like that. And now you're looking at this, your son, before he's even walked out the door. Now you know you need to be watching around with the white supremacists out there. I mean, it, it's, it's, I was watching a documentary yesterday. Thank you very much for uh, reminding me of that. I was watching a documentary yesterday, I want to say. I want to say it was. And it, I want to say the name of the documentary was The Last Nazis. That's what I want to say it is. And I think you can find it on Netflix, as a matter of fact. I want to say it's called The Last Nazis. And it starts off with the guy who, um, he's in charge of the, um, he's in charge of basically the Nazi hunter group in Israel. And it starts off with the documentary with him saying, it's really a shame that I even have to do this. It's a shame that these people are still even out here. He said that this should have all been taken care of long before I was born. It's a shame that I have to do this, but I have to do it. Brother, it's a damn shame that the police are still out here 150 years after emancipation, 150 years after so-called liberation, and we are still saying the same thing. Don't go out after dark. The white folks might be out there. That's what your great-great-granddaddy said, your great-granddaddy, your granddaddy, your daddy, you. Five, six generations later, we are still telling our sons, be careful, them there white folks is outside. You best watch where you go. Watch what you say. Watch what you do. And at what point do you have a generation that does a King Leonidas? I'm so damn ashamed I have to say that. Because black men have not given us enough Shaka Zulus. They haven't given us enough. They haven't given us enough Ramses II in our modern era. We haven't had enough of them. At what point do black men say this far and no farther? You cannot have my sons. At what point do we say that? That you can't have my son. You can try to take me, but you are not going to get my child. You're not going to get him. When do we have that as a, 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 a moment among black men? No wonder your children don't respect you. Ray Lewis, you can go to hell. Because you've given up, and, and there's nothing about you to respect. Your personal life to the side, which is pretty damn atrocious to begin with but fella you ain't gave us nothing to respect we don't have anything to respect about you and i want to see us as black men change that i want right now our children look at us with contempt and they look at us with contempt because they see the police that we should have stopped they see the white supremacists that we should have destroyed they see the white supremacist structure that we should have overthrown and it's still there jason how can your children respect you when they know that there's somebody who can walk in your house and kick your ass at any time. How can your children respect They're you? Not. They're not. That's not going to happen. I'm trying to figure out, I'm trying to wonder with our black men, when are you all going to say enough is enough? The youth have spoken. The youth have, the yesterday's protest was the youth who have no other way to out. They understand. We have no economic power. We have no political power. Okay. Right now, those kids are acting just like in Palestine or any other place else where they are oppressed and they have no political power and no economic power, okay? That is the exact same reaction, okay? I have my major gripe with that black thing that was out there sniffing up her son because one thing about other people, and you know as well, you know, Jay, and I, you know, I retired from the military, and, I, and I've seen situations where those women over there of oppression do not snatch up their children and smack them up in the face of the oppressor. They will hand that kid an AK-47 and send them out there to point them guns and shoot at those people that are oppressing them. But no, not here, okay? The black man, is that she did, she played the mammy role, okay, on the plantation, and the mammy's role was to sit there and eat young in line for math and she did her job perfectly six kids they all skinning and grinning on the news six kids i mean obviously she's sitting on a welfare check you were in the you were in the military you seen it and you said it absolutely correctly in palestine in libya in iraq you would never have an arab mother sit up here and tell her children you stop giving them Israeli soldiers a hard time that would never happen and I will go even further Jason 
I will go even further than that. You saw me put up the story about um I want to say it was it was named Megan Sheehan. Megan yeah. Sheehan. She's the white woman in um well they, they say she's in San Francisco and she got beat up by the uh, BART police out there. The same ones who killed Oscar Grant. Exact same ones. She got her face busted open on video, on body camera. On body camera. She got her face busted up. They just cleared the officers, by the way. The police department said there was no wrongdoing. By the way. Show me where Gloria Allred and Gloria Steinem are to go out there and say you white men need to stop. Show me where they are. Gloria Allred will grab every hood rat slut who ever got laid on top of by a pro football player. But you know that she's not taking Megan Sheehan's case. She's not going to help any white women to go after white men. She's not going to help them to do that. And the real reason why that boy got slapped by his mother and these white men are sitting up here just laughing and teeheeing about it, brother, is because we don't have an infrastructure in place yet. Let me say that one more time. We don't have an infrastructure in place yet with which to punish her kind. And right now she's betting her life. She's betting every one of her chips in this world against black people. She wants the situation to stay the way it is. And brother, she better pray it never changes. Not in her lifetime. She better pray it never changes. Because the first chance, once you have a new infrastructure in place, her kind are the first ones you go to. Because they've made it clear, we would massa. And it's like, okay, you're off code and you're going to stay there. But in white society, that doesn't happen. You will never see a white woman smacking her white child for disrespecting a black man. Let me say that one more time, y'all. You will never in your life see a white woman go ham smacking around her black, her, her white child for disrespecting or attacking a white man. Michael Slager gunned down Walter Scott and what did Walter Scott's, uh, what did Michael Slager's mother say? She was like, oh good. She back then. She was like, I haven't even seen the video, but he's a good cop. Now, if she sees the video, you think her answer is going to change? No, she's like, I don't need to see the video. He just did it to one of y'all. That makes it okay. Automatically. I don't have to do anything. I ain't got to see nothing. There's nothing to see. It's one of you. It's just one of you. No, you're never going to see them go ham on each other for attacking us. Black folk want to sit up here. And what she was doing was she was doing that to show out for the invisible white person on her shoulder. Because she knows that was going to get back to the white press and that somebody would come talking to her. What else does she have to offer? She gave up her vagina a long time ago. Ain't nobody checking for that. What's what's amazing is that incident, which I, to be to be honest with you, would have because it really showed you all those people, black people that supported. Oh my goodness, it it was it's unbelievable how how many black people, men and women, were all clap him. Yeah, she mama the mama the year. Really? That's the baby maker with Washington Post. Kids. It was in the Washington Post. They had one of their Negro Bedwinch writers in the Washington Post talking about this woman was mom of the year. Mom of the year for attacking her son. So I guess that makes Ray Rice man of the year. Exactly. I guess that makes that Ray Rice happen. man of the year. Yes, Mona. Um <laughs> Parents are supposed to lead by example. Now, I knew from the time my son was in preschool that I was ever supposed to be discipline him in front of white people. And if he got out of line or he got into some trouble and they called me up to his school, she from preschool, told me what his offense was, I, I told my son, let's go, son. I never disciplined them. I 
never discipline my son in front of white people. And they were appalled. I think he hit a officer's daughter one day. I said, what did she do to him? Because my son does not hit. Well, she hit him. I said, okay. We can do anything. Not in front of you. If I do do anything. So this lady out here in Baltimore that physically assaulted her son in public, in front of white supremacists, in a video that went viral. Um, oh, Mona. What she did was she let the police know that it is okay to beat the hell out of our children. Because look at what the mother just done. And this is a perfect example. I'm sorry. This is a perfect example to the reason why we have to know a single mother. We have to know that this is not going to go. We have to know that a woman is not in position to raise a man. Now, a few years back when they murdered Trayvon Martin, I couldn't, I couldn't eat. I couldn't do anything. But there was a protest here out in California, five minutes away from my home. I knew nothing about it, but my husband, one of his friends told me they're protesting at the courthouse. I immediately got up and started putting my clothes. So I don't leave in protest. I was too close not to go down there to see what happened. So my son saw me getting dressed. He said, Mama, what are you doing? I said, I'm dressed. He said, you going down there? I said, yes. My son looked me at eyes. I caught eye, eye contact with him. He looked at me for a long time. He shook his head. And he walked out the room. I continued to dress. Now, when I got to my car, my son and two of his homeboys was out there waiting for me. They said, what are you doing? No, I asked them, what are they doing? They said, we're falling with you. This was a perfect opportunity for her to see that her son trying to stand up and be a man. So I went with him, like I said, because she seen that camera out. Then she acted a damn fool. She should have been out there with her son, side by side. There should have been a Q&A right then and there on the spot. Why are you here, son? What does this mean to you? Those types of questions, and you need to watch your back. You need to be, around to be aware of your surroundings. This woman set up, and she said that she was to shield her child. He liked to be in the street. You have failed. My child was never in the street. I have always lived five minutes from my job and five minutes from my school, from that boy's school. If he can get it in five minutes, he deserved that. That's how you shield your child. I was not a victim to the streets, even though I was a latch. He was a latchkey child, and I was a sick mother. She ain't shielding nothing when she had five more kids. Well, even worse than that, she's not shielding anything. Even worse than that, did you remember when she said that she did not want her son to become the next Freddie Gray? She didn't want her son to become the next Freddie Gray. Please tell me, what was she doing to prevent that from occurring? If you're not stopping the police, how the hell is that preventing that from occurring? And second of all, let me tell you to the dumbasses out there who are congratulating her for this nonsense. Did you notice who was congratulating her? Wolf Blitzer. Scott Pelly. Notice how the white national media latched on to that video. They, they, you've never seen them show a video like that of a white mother. They had the white guy at the grocery store who smacked his son and knocked him on his ass and they wanted to put him in jail and everything else. But a black woman does that with her son and all of a sudden it's okay. Could you imagine a similar video like that of a white woman doing that to her kid? And the white media talking about how great that is and how wonderful that is? When you see that you are a black person surrounded by nothing but white supremacists and white interests, and they are all congratulating you for something that you did to another black person, hey, stupid, that's supposed to be your first clue that you're wrong. Ain't none of them got your best interests at heart. When you are surrounded by white media figures and all of them are telling you, hey, out of way, girl, you go, girl. <laughs> what about what you did to something you did to your children? That's supposed to be your first damn clue that this was the wrong thing. 
But I guess that only counts to a person who's actually thinking. Would I be would I be wrong to say that she'll probably get a nice camera in her face on Mother's Day? You, you, you know, you know what she did. She put on. She bought into the stereotypes that our children are thugs. She said, "I don't want him to be the pretty gray." You bought it. You you labeled your son. You put him on front street, and now they know where to get his come son from. You put him on. Front street. And then you read the article, and it was saying that we will shoot all better others, all, all the mothers. That's bullshit. I mean, who is she to try to tell anybody about being a good mother? You've been run through by half the hood and got six kids. Who the hell are you to be? That, that, that is what qualifies as the Washington Post for mom of the year. It lets you know. And it was a black female who wrote that article, by the way. Um, it lets you know what kind of black person you have to be to get a job at the Washington Post. That's what it shows you. Jason, I'll let you have the last word. If people, what we are doing is literally, we have literally changed the national conversation. White supremacy is pulling all the stops out. They are calling in all their reinforcement coons, and there are people that are out there saying exactly the, the terminology and phrases that we established as far as coonery, white supremacy, you know, buck dancing, whatever. We are out here. We've changed the national conversation. It's no longer, people ain't buying the, the, out there and saying, oh, let's just are holding Obama to task. People are holding the new Department of Justice to task. The mayor is on the hot seat up there in Baltimore. Other people over the country sold us out. The clergy have sold us out. They're in the hot seat. America is shook. They, they've, they've awoken, they've awoken, you know, another monster. We're up. We, we're coming out. We can't be stopped. First. Thank you very much for giving us a call here tonight, brother. We're having a few audio difficulties with Blog Talk, but we will persevere here, of course. Uh, let me try this again. Caller at 910. You're on live with the Black Channel. See if they've got that taken care of. They keep having some issues there. We'll have to come back to them later. Um, we're coming up on the end of our time here. I want to see if I can just try to grab as many people here um, as quickly as I can. Caller from 336, you're on live with the Black Channel. Hi, yes, this is Tony. I'm calling from Charlotte, North Carolina. Okay, what's your name again? Tony. Hello, T Hello Tony from I'm North Carolina. What's on your room. mind? I'm, Car I'm Caramel Black in the uh, chat room. And what's on your mind, sister? Um, well, first of all, I wanted to say, as far as Ray Woods is concerned, um, I don't understand how he can say that black people, young black people can't dictate what we do when in the 60s and the 70s when the surprise movement was going on, we had the same issue as far as their parents telling them the same thing, that young people can't do anything. But we are the ones that are changing the dynamic of the situation even before Mike Brown and even after Mike Brown, we proved that. Um, but my question is, I had a question for you because my difficulty in our search to, for the truth is, is that I get hit a lot of times on my social media by people that always, um, by black people that confront me and um, basically I feel like I'm ganged up on because, like, when I come to come to sites like yours or um, Tariq Minsky, I see like-minded people that are on the same page me. But it seems like the majority of black people that are on my social media and others that I've seen as well, it seems like we cannot get on the same page as far as them understanding white supremacy in general. Because a lot of them don't even say supremacy is real. And so my question is, how do I convey to people um, the severity of white supremacy and the danger of white supremacy to our community? You do not. See how easy that was? Mm-hmm. 
How old are you, Tony? 27. Okay, you're 27. Ray Lewis is about the same age as me. He's 39 years old. 39. He ain't part of the civil rights generation. He's not, you know, 50 plus years old or older. Ray Lewis is my generation. So that's why I have no mercy on him. He's one of my peers age-wise. He's got no excuses. None. None. He came up after the civil rights generation. The average age of a Black Panther was 17 years old. I know I had Freeland, Freeman and Farr on my broadcast. I don't talk about the Black Panthers. I talk to the Black Panthers. And we had the same problems back then. Not with the older generation, Tony. Understand that, okay? Back in 1963 okay. and 1967 and 1970, baby, the problem was not the 50-year-olds of that time. The problem were the 20-year-olds and 25-year-olds. Because Malcolm X will tell you, when he would go talk to the news media, they'd find some black man, same age as him, some coon would jump up saying, they doing all this militant talking. You know, things is all right like they is. We talk about the 60s like they're the bad old days, but Malcolm X was surrounded by a bunch of black folk his age talking about everything's okay. Bull Connor on a rampage. Lincoln Rockwell killing Negroes all over the place. And black, most black people, most of them, were telling Malcolm X and Megger Evers and, and Stokely Carmichael and even Dr. King, sit down, y'all causing trouble. Even Dr. King. The same white folk today who are talking about want to throw invoke Dr. King's name every time you turn around, those are the same people back in 1960 who were saying that he was a troublemaker. The exact same ones. All of a sudden, the only thing they want to talk about is, oh, well, Dr. King told you all to get yourselves killed and don't defend yourselves. That's what they mean by nonviolence. Dr. King said that if you get killed, you're not supposed to defend yourself. Isn't it amazing that Wolf Blitzer never talks to fellow Jews and says that when the Palestinians bomb you, you should be nonviolent? Isn't that very interesting? Right, that it's the same they never say that. Theory that. White people tell them, like, you don't see white people outrage but not at least not on television you don't see white people outrage to other white cops not kill us so as black people we feel the need for, to attack each other and tell us not to riot and not be angry as if we don't have the right to be angry I mean, but understand, they think they're protecting... Black people live in a fantasy world, and the folk who are talking to you crazy, they are talking to you in their own minds that way. They've got a little white supremacist on their shoulder that's watching them 24-7, so they're talking... That's, that's what I mean when I said months ago that black people are institutionalized. And if you've met anybody who's been in jail for a lot of years, you realize that once he gets out of jail, he keeps the same routine that he had when he was in prison. He folds his sheets the same way. He keeps his clothes the same way that he did when he was in prison. It's like, brother, you ain't got to do that no more. At nighttime, he turns out the lights on the dot at 8 p.m. Brother, you ain't got to do that no more. You're not in prison anymore. But he's institutionalized. He's institutionalized, so he's acting as if prison guards are still watching him and monitoring his behavior, even though he knows for a fact there's nobody there. So in your case, sister, understand something. The black channel was not set up for the purposes of converting people. I'm not here to wake no damn body up. If you saw Trayvon Martin and didn't wake up, you are not asleep, you're dead. If you saw Walter Scott and you still don't acknowledge this is a race war, you're dead. I'm not here to wake you up. I say what I say because it rings true with a certain segment and they know that, hey, that guy's on the same page as me. I'm not here to get other people on the same page as me. I'm here to gather the ones who are already there. Everybody else who's not, to hell with you. You sit there. You sit there and you just wait. But I'm not here to draft you. If you think that cooning and buffooning and praying and everything else is going to be the path to salvation, you keep it up. But I'm not here to gather you because sticking with people who do not accept the reality of our situation right now, Tony, that will get you killed. Eric Garner was not militant. Not beating up on Eric Garner, but Eric Garner was just the average black man from the streets. He didn't think that that day was coming. He didn't think that he needed to build an economy. He didn't think he needed to hook up with other brothers and do that. 
He didn't think he he didn't think that it would cost him his life until the day it did. Walter Scott, 56 years old, up to 50 years old, spent his life cranking out kids, didn't build no economy, waited till he got into his 50s to start getting his life together. He didn't think that he needed to build an economy. He didn't think that his life would depend on it. He didn't think so. Right. He said to himself, hey, I'm just doing me. If I leave them alone, they'll leave me alone. Who y'all militant niggas is? Mm -hmm. Until the day they came for him. So while I'm not happy about what happened to him, and of course we should object to it, you need to understand that I wouldn't have argued with Walter Scott then to get him on the same page with us, I wouldn't have argued with him then, and I won't argue with anybody today. If you don't understand that Walter Scott, Rakia Boyd, Renisha McBride, Trayvon Martin, Mike Brown, Eric Garner, Akai Gurley, Tamir Rice, Sean Bell, Oscar Grant, Amadou Diallo, Abner, well, Abner Luima, to be totally honest with you, that was terrible in its own right, by the way. If you don't understand that Freddie Gray and all the others, do you know, do you realize how long I was sitting there naming names? Do you realize how long I was sitting here doing that? And that's not even all of them. Mm-hmm. That's not even close. Right. Now, if we don't understand that that could have been any one of us, if you don't get that right now without me saying anything to you, if you don't already know that, then there's no use in me talking to you. You're a lost cause. I'm here for Tony. Tony right. gets it. Tony needs a support system so that she don't fall into no damn coonery. But I'm not here to, quote, wake up the people around Tony. Y'all Negroes just sit right where you are. You sit there and buck dance with Ray Rice. I mean, Ray, Ray, Ray Lewis. You sit there with him. You do that. You do you. And just understand, I'm not arguing against the police for them. I'm arguing with the police for you, Tony. For somebody with some sense. For my kids. For my nieces. For my nephews. I'm doing this for them. I'm not doing this for the people who are still, that there's some debate going on in their minds. The folks who are telling themselves there's still a debate happening. I ain't here for them. I have one more question. Um, if, if you had time. Um, I wanted to get your opinion about as far as, I mean, I understand that the white supremacy corrupts the media. But I wanted to get your stance on how you feel about the fact that they do not, uh, when you talk, you talk about Rakia Bull, they do not broadcast hardly, if at all, um, any stories about black women getting killed out here. So, and I'm not trying to discredit um, Black Matter. I'm not a black feminist by any means um, because I'm, I'm black, period, men or women. But I just wanted to see see if what your opinion on was it uh, as far as do you think that they purposely pop the story of black men and not black women on purpose or is it just no 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 they're not they're not they're not, they're not they're not shielding them no i mean the stories do get reported and it's not all the stories of black men getting killed to get reported either it's it's really the most egregious or the most provable that are being reported but understand something sister mm-hmm. When you got all these black feminists out here running interference for white supremacy, it makes it easy to kill all of y'all. It makes it very easy to ignore black women being killed. When you got the Jamila, whatever the hell her name is, Jamila Lemieux and, and, and Toni Morrison and the rest of them, sister, you are, as black women, you have to understand it's not white women who are gunning y'all down. It's white men. It's white men. And when you got Beyond Black and White and Crystal and Karazine and all these people making a living off of telling y'all to go swirling and stuff like that, don't you know that they are the ones who allow the media to ignore your deaths? Because they are telling white the white male power structure that they can do no wrong. So, of course, if a white male kills one of you, they're not going to jump up and say something. You just went through the Washington Post. You can be mom of the year if you slap a black male, but we ain't going to say nothing about slapping a white one. 
the same Negro bedwinch writer in the Washington Post cheering about slapping a black male, she won't say two cross words to a white one. So don't you know how easy it is to kill her? A at least with the black men, we raise hell when somebody kills one of us. You show me the black females in the press who raise hell when that happens. You show them to me. Tell me who they are. Goldie Taylor, Melissa Harris Perry. Show me the black women who are raising hell about that. And here's the other problem. You're not going to go anywhere if your men don't do it. Because as black women, you can't defend yourselves. You can't. Mm -hmm. If you are going to be defended, it's going to be the men who do it. That's it. So if the men are compromised, you are automatically compromised. It's not going to go any other way. You are helpless if we are powerless. So if you want to know why it's so easy to ignore black women, it's because it's so easy to kill black men. You see, it is the men who go on the offensive. It is the men who exact justice. It is the men who are the warriors. But when you got black women out there slapping their 16 year old warriors and saying don't do nothing, don't you know that if his mother gets her brains blown out tomorrow like Rakia Boyd did, don't you know that, there, that there, there was a riot for Freddie Gray? There will not even be somebody cracking an ice cube for, for that boy's mother. For Toya Graham, if she gets herself killed by the police tomorrow, what did she just demonstrate by her actions with her son? Do nothing. Say nothing. The only reason that we're talking about Freddie Gray is because black folks started mobilizing in Baltimore. In the case of Toya Graham, it won't even be that. It won't even be that. So that's the reason why, sister, you aren't going to... There is no black... Remember black women... It's not there and it's never going to be there. That's that's this diversion. You never see other groups letting you play that game with them. White women getting the brakes beat off of them by the police. You don't see them saying white women lives matter. You don't see them going after the white male power structure. You notice that? You don't see these white women. Mm -hmm. uh, Megan Sheehan said a lot of things, but she didn't say they did as a woman this is wrong. You notice she didn't go after white men. And there's not an attorney who's going to help her do that either. Black women are in living in a fantasy world as a group, and it makes it easy to kill them. And I'm saying we have to stop that. There is no black life that is worth losing. But we have to understand, we have to stop the strategy that's at play. The strategy that is at play is not going after black women. There have been a handful of black women killed. A handful. We have scores of, is practically all black males being killed. And they're doing that because if you can subjugate the warrior class, the women are automatically submitted. So we have to treat this, right. we have to recognize the strategy and fight the strategy. The people who are trying to get you to play that gender game, those are the people who are trying to distract for white daddy. They're hoping that there's a trinket in it for them. Don't fall for it. You're already on code. You're already on page. If the men are helpless, you're a sitting duck. You ain't going to go fight no cops, Tony. Let's just say it like it is. You ain't going to go fight none. And if it came down to shooting, you ain't going to do that either. You're not. You need your men. I'm in Atlanta. We get kind of gangsta in Atlanta. I mean, I would definitely do that, though. Well, you know what? That that would be a nice idea, but I don't think that our salvation can be dependent on that because any military on no. earth will be paying you. Any military on earth would pay you to march into battle led by your women and your children with the men sitting in the back. Let's not get in our feelings. Any military on earth will pay you to march into battle like that. Because they know they can't lose. If you're going to survive, it's going to be your men. It's going to be your men. And that's why they want right. you to separate from the men. Because they know that if the men show up, you don't call dogs down. They know you call the thunder down. That's why they want you separated from the men. Now they can just... They, there's only a few black fe females being killed, period. That's the first thing. It's not so much as being ignored. It's just the number is minuscule. But of the ones who are being killed, you don't have a black 
in media structure in place. Everybody's trying to be a model on a white network. So no wonder you're so easy to ignore. I want that to stop. Right. I want that to stop. Because the white, the black women in the media, they ain't gonna say nothing about it. Why? Because they don't, they don't identify as black women. There was a line that Jesse Lee Peterson said when Tariq Nasheed debated him, where Jesse said, that "I'm not a member of the black collective." Okay, but he spends day and night talking about black people, but he says he's not a member of the black collective. That's a schizophrenic nigger. <laughs> that 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 nigger is schizophrenic. The well, guess what? Oprah sees herself the same way. She doesn't see herself as a black woman. She just says that for political purposes. Take a look at her daily life. Melissa Harris Perry, Goldie Taylor, Jill Lemieux. The list goes on. They don't see themselves as black women. So the black women that you do have in media who would press their bosses to cover this, they ain't going to st stick up for you. They're trying to figure out how they can be the next Olivia Pope. They don't give a damn about you being dead. You don't have any black women in the media who are advocates for other black women who are killed. You don't have any. You got Jews in the media who will advocate for Jews in Israel. You've got white women in the media who will advocate for white women if something happens to them, feminism and whatnot. You don't have any black women in media who advocate for black women. You don't have it. That's why the media doesn't talk about you. Even when you die. Mm. Can I say something? Yes, Mona. I, I just want to say, you know, it's very dangerous when we try to separate ourselves from our men. And like Jason said, we're not, you know, uh, taking anything off of the, the, the black women that are being killed. Here's the thing. The reason why it's um, more important to uh, broadcast or through the media the death of a black man is because that's white supremacy claiming a victory. If they kill off our black men, what legacies can they leave? What legacies can they leave? I'm sorry. If they kill off black men, what what warriors can they reproduce to fight the system? So it's very important to kill our men because without our men, we don't have any children. And without our men, we don't have any protection. And with our men, male children that we raise will not be brought in. Pop in the, the the proper to fight against white supremacy. So that is why it is so important for them to say we got another one. Understand something, and Mona has made a great point. Tony, if you kill a black man, it will frighten a hundred other black men. And it will frighten a thousand other black men women mm. when you kill one black man it frightens a hundred men and a thousand women because the women say of course it's logic if that's what they could do to the males how easily could they do that to me right. I'll let you have the last and word turning, also, I'm sorry I'll let you have the last word Okay, I was just going to say yes, and in, in, in turn, it ruins, I think that ultimately is is ruining the black infrastructure, our family infrastructure, because it makes it, it pretty much like keeps us separate from each other, like I was saying, and not that, but also once you take the black man out of the family, it also doesn't give us what we call the head of the, of the, the, head of the household. And once you take the head off, you know what I'm saying, the body is useless. So that said, I just appreciate you guys allowing me to um, be on your show today. And I appreciate you even having this platform. And, you know, I hope that you continue to to hold this platform because we need you. And we need more like people like you out here. Thank you very much for giving us a call tonight. If you're not a member of my Facebook group, the official Jason Black group, you definitely need to join. Stay in touch with like-minded black people because oh, you need some you. shepherding. I'm following you on that and, and uh, YouTube. I Great. You. <laughs> That's where you need to be. Black first. Thank you very much for joining us. Black first, as always. I'm going to try to zip through a few more phone calls here if I can. Caller from 408, you're on live with the Black Channel. Ten seconds. Caller from 408, you're on live with the Black Channel. Okay, caller from 408's been abducted. 
caller from let me see here I had somebody who wanted to speak to me I don't see him on here though okay we'll have to come back to them some other time I guess okay let's take uh hmm, that's a little odd caller from 434 you're on live with the black channel Caller from 434, you're on live with the Black Channel. Okay, caller from 434 has decided not to check with us here. Let me get a caller from 646, you're on live with the Black Channel. Hello? Yes, you're on live. Oh, hi. How you doing? I'm calling. This is uh, OGO in the chat room. I'm calling live from New York City, and I'm actually in a rush, but I just wanted to call in. And, you know, um, it's just been a lot going on through my mind. And just like a black person you know, in America and in the world. And, you know, I'm, just like you guys, I you know, it's just so much going on. And, you know, uh, about what you said about the civil movements, generation they're a bunch of cowards you know and i'm not just talking just saying it just because you said it including you know people like in my family who like you know my you know like my parents so you know or even ex aunts and uncles you know i was looking at al jazeera today and i'm looking at this black lady crying on tv talking about because she works at cvs they burned down the cvs and she's crying she's worried about her job, losing her job because this kid's down and they lose their face. I'm just like, is that what's going on? You know, it's it's crazy. amazing yeah, that just... black folk will get out there and cry over a CVS that you don't own, you have yeah, no stock yeah, in. Talking about, she'll be the same. I lost more of my job. And... Okay, but she'll be the same black female who will give you crappy service at CVS. Hell yeah. <laughs> Can, can we just be straight up honest about it? She'll be the same neck rolling wench, won't look at you in the eye, rings up your order wrong, gives you a bunch of lip and yep. attitude. Uh, it's like if you burn down the Walmart. It's the wall-to-wall -wall hood rats at the damn cash register, and they'll be talking to you like they were just the model employees, and yet none of us have ever met a model employee walking in Walmart. But let something happen exactly. to the store, and all of a sudden it's, oh, my little job. Oh, I love working there. Why they had to do this here? And it's amazing. Why, why is it we don't see that every day from you then in your attitude and how you behave? Get the hell out of here with that mess. Brother, I, I, see, I see that every day. I mean, I leave in the hall, so I see this every day. Like I said, you know, it's going on in Baltimore. It's going on in every other city. And, you know, it's interesting because I wasn't born in this country. I'm black. I wasn't born in this country. I'm from Nigeria. But, you know, like, Adam, relatives should tell me what's going on in this country. Like, what? Somebody did the blacks in this country is, you know, so on. You know, why, like, why do I fight back? Uh, but, like, I try to, I, you know, they don't really understand what's going on, the politics and the racial elements. Some of them do, some of them don't, but it's, it's, it's frustrating, you know. You know. If, if my, my friends are my friendly, I've had friends of my friendly. Some of them, are, I really in the picture, like, they see what's going on, and some of them, they just choose to, to remain silent, you know. Well, it's just, uh, silence is going to get, understand it, in the 21st century, silence is no longer annoying. Silence will simply mean that you'll die quietly. You can't, be, so you, can't, you can't be silent, you know, what's, with what's going on. No, if you're if silent you have, today, you're, you're just going to die quietly. That's all that means. Um, exactly. I got to go ahead and try you know, to move I'm along exactly. here because I got to try to get in as many calls as I can. But thank you very much for giving us a call here today. Please call us back. Let me try to get caller from 240. I'm going to try to get two or three more calls in here before this thing cuts me off. Caller from 240, you're on live with the Black Channel. Yeah, this is Sam again from Oklahoma. Okay, what's your name again? Yeah, Sam, this was, this was Sam Pitt. Carolina. I got cut off earlier. Okay, Sam Pitt, North Carolina. What's on your mind, brother? Yeah, yeah I finishing uh, my point there. Uh, I was talking about uh, exactly what you were saying earlier about the white people scared to talk or talk on the issues. Uh, they got that little white premises on their shoulder. And uh, I had an experience like that uh, this week. Um, I was talking to a friend of mine 
laundromat of all places. Uh, there was a white guy. Who, he was like the, I guess, the person who fixes the stuff or something like that. And you know, I was passionate about talking about black empowerment, talking to him. And uh, you know, he wasn't interested. As soon as uh, the white guy came close, he was like, he kind of, I mean, he was like, "Hold, hey man, hold on, uh, this white dude right there." And I'm like, I looked at him, whoa. I mean, he didn't have any, you know I mean, emotion when he was talking about black empowerment, but he went real passionate when when he wanted to make sure that this, this white guy didn't know, this white guy over here speaking about black empowerment. I mean, that's, black people are just scared. And this, and this was a regular guy. These are, brother, these are the circumstances that simply expose the cowards. The, understand something, white supremacy does not create cowards. That is one of the great lies that we as black people have generated amongst ourselves. White supremacy does not create a coward. White supremacy exposes a coward and reveals your cowards. It does not create any. If you're not already a coward, it's not going to be an issue. True. It's not going to be an issue. That's true. Well, thank you very much for giving us a call here tonight. Please do check with us again here. I'm going to try to get another couple of calls in here if I can. Um, probably try to just get one or two more before I wrap it up here. I'll probably try to get just one more. Let me get a uh, caller from 702. You've been waiting a while. Welcome. You're live on the Black Channel. Caller from 702. I can hear myself back there. Okay, 702 is AWOL. Let me get caller. Oh, I hit the wrong one here. Well, anyway, caller from 843. You're on live with the Black Channel. Hey, Tobias. Call Phoenix. Brother Tobias calling in from Phoenix. If you're on speaker, you probably want to take it off. It's got you sound like you're calling from a soup can, and I know you're not using a uh, track phone. Oh. There we go. Am I now? All right, what's on your mind, brother? All right, I was I was just looking and uh, and I did this on purpose. You know, I post on I already talk on my social media page stuff, and uh, I got all these likes. As soon as I criticize the president, not that many likes from black people, but people refuse to put out the president's feet to the fire. He would not condemn the killer cops, but he would condemn. You know, black people who are acting out. Now, I don't think these riots are going to mean anything cause unless they build businesses in their own economy. But still, the, at, like, at least from these little cops. Because let's be honest, if someone slap Bruce Jenner right now, he'd be all over Tom, how bad that is. Yeah, I mean, if, 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 mayor, if Walter Scott had yeah. been gay, Barack Obama would be all he'd over if 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 a Kai Gurley were gay, he'd have been all over. If Rakia Boyd were a lesbian, he'd have been all over it. And I don't blame Barack Obama because he's gay. Okay, Barack Obama being gay does not bother me. I think we can all admit at this point. Okay, he is. All right, fine. I don't hold that against him. Well, I do hold against you, whether you're gay, straight, white, black, green, is that when my people are being brutalized and you are defending it and enabling it. Now we got a squab. Now we got a beef because that is what will not be allowed. But as black people, here's yeah. the problem, Tobias. As black people, we have a penchant. Look it up. We have a steady habit, a habitual behavior of electing the very people who can't wait to sell us out. Obama, uh -huh. it doesn't matter. Oh, we could say that we got hoodwinked in 2008. We could say they hoodwinked us in 2008. Brother, everybody and their mama saw what Barack Obama was by 2012. You had already had incidents by then. Trayvon Martin had already been killed. Troy Davis had already been killed. Well, you've been with me the whole time. You saw me doing the broadcast about that. I was calling out since day yeah. one. He sat silent through a whole bunch of people. And if those weren't enough to show you what the truth is, you just don't want to see it. But we see it everywhere. Take a look at Michael Nutter in Philadelphia, Kasim Reed in Atlanta, Ray Nagan in New Orleans, um, uh, 
Adrian Fenty in DC, Stephanie Rawlings Blake in Baltimore, every black city we keep electing, Kwame Kilpatrick, Bing, who came in after him. We can go down the list, the Morials in New Orleans. We keep putting people into position who clearly are not working with us or for us. We keep doing that as a group. And as long as we keep electing our own poison, you can forget about living. And the white supremacists see that we keep electing people whose purpose is, first of all, we keep electing people who they chose. That's the first thing. Black folk understand something. If the black people that you're putting into office got a bunch of white folks smiling behind them, that's your first clue something is wrong. That's your first clue. Now, that's kind of hard to register for black people because black people have in their minds that life isn't good unless there's a bunch of white folks smiling at you. So that one's going to be a particularly hard one to overcome. But we that's why we need a code, brother, so that all the people who are off code, you got to go. Plain and simple, you got to go. We're going to yeah. do like these other folks do. We're going to carve out a little old broke down piece of t part of town for you. Y'all can stay over there in your pr housing projects and the police can just run buck wild on you since you've decided that that's how you want to live. But you can't be allowed to hold the rest of us down anymore. Yeah, and uh, I was talking to a friend of mine. They were talking about like solution. I was like economic empowerment, money. And that was... And I told him about how Ferguson, those those, those people, they cost money for them to uh, run. And he's like, and I said, look, find ten black guys in these hoods. Look down their feet. That's how. You, that's how the money they spent. And these Jordans were ten dollars a pop. And he mean, told me that people have money to give. And, but yet people want to complain about it because right now, look all those politicians you name, all Democrats. Black folks think because they don't call you into your face that they like you. But they had they set one policy. Better yet, your black president Obama black people, y'all say he can't do anything to a Republican, but nine days after his first inauguration, he found a little lead better act for white women to get equal pay. Oh, he blew black women. And by the way, white was feel equal in reports every quarter. The white women pull money in the men. But he won't bring that up either when he talks about quality. But black folks keep championing him because he takes pictures with Michelle Obama. He wears gear. He's business like he shoots some basketball. Well, like I say, brother, this is where a leadership class comes into place. You can call it the talented 10th. You can call it 5% or you can call it whatever you want to. Black society needs people like us to be a leadership class so that we can set the agenda for black society as a group. Because these other folk, brother, they will march off to the gallows. They will march off to the gas chambers singing, I will trust in the Lord the whole time there. All the way there. And yeah. here's the difference, Tobias. I ain't planning on joining you. I'll let you have the last word. I'll say two quick points. First, black folks love Game of Thrones. Look what happened when the Starks were the yeah, They went after Jamie Lannister. He kill him, but he was part of the family. Game on that. And look at Ray Lewis. All these NFL guys, he's talking about what folks should be doing. What? He lives in Baltimore. What in the hell is stopping him or many of these other black athletes building stores? Because I said real quick, I had been former football player Dan Marley. He got, not only he owns a restaurant, he owns a real estate group, a group like a development group, and they got buildings both the place to the name on it and get money from it. So what are Ray Lewis' excuses then? He ain't put nobody to work. He just worried about his pen job. And that's all I have today. Thank you very much for giving us a call here tonight, Tobias. Ray Lewis was sitting in that room looking like a bum. He was sitting in that room looking like he got dressed in the dark. He was sitting in that room like looking like he had gotten his clothes from a homeless shelter. That's how he came to talk to his people. Go on, y'all, and go take a look at that. If you're not a member of the Jason Black group, the video is in there. I posted on YouTube, uh, posted on Facebook a little bit later so you all can see it. Ray, Ray Lewis came to talk to his people dressed like a bum. His clothes were tattered and everything else. He came to his people dressed like a bum. 
Now, when he goes and speaks in front of whites, he comes and dressed dignified. He comes to talk to his people looking like a bum. And let me just say something else tonight. Ray Lewis, you ain't got no people. After what you did, you ain't got no people. This is something that should mark you for life. That you had the gall to sit up here and try to make yourself, you're going to run interference for your employers against black people. You don't have a people anymore, Ray Lewis. You get the Halle Berry treatment. You get the Montel Williams treatment. You get the Tiger Woods treatment. You get the Bill Cosby treatment. When you pull a stunt like this, that's what you get. You don't have a people anymore, Ray Lewis. You're out there by yourself. It's not gonna happen on my clock. It's not, and that's the other thing, by the way, you dumbass. It's not, it's not gonna happen on my clock, stupid. It's supposed to be, it's not gonna happen on my watch. And it's not referring to a wristwatch either, moron. It's referring to your sight, what you're seeing. It is not going to happen while I am on watch. God, and I thought Flavor Flav was the dumbest black man who could get in front of a camera. I didn't see Ray Lewis coming. If you're going to sit up here and preach it, people, buddy, at least get your metaphors correct. It's not going to happen on my watch. It's not going to happen on my clock. It's not going to happen on my... What time is it? 4.15? I'm gone. There's a whole lot of people that are going to find themselves disinherited after this event. And this concludes tonight's broadcast of the BlackChannel.net radio. I am your host, your brother, your humble servant, the Black Authority. And until next time, brothers and sisters from around the world, remember, Black is the future. The future is uncompromising. And it's time to choose. <laughs>